Good morning, happy Monday. I feel like in the winter, especially right now during our alternate state of COVID, kind of a lockdown, um, Mondays feel like a new year to me every day. Um, I thought I would start the week in a moment of stillness. I would say that a lot of people in my circle have said, oh, I know I need to meditate more during uh, the upcoming year. And I know that's something I actually need to do. I know that sounds odd that a yoga teacher would need to meditate more, but I do. Um, I thrive on busyness and stillness actually be better for me. I'm just looking how unflattering this top is. Um, so I thought I would bring to mind a couple simple things that meditation could be like the gateway to meditation. The idea of doing meditation when you think of monks and sitting and uh, that doesn't appeal to some of us because it's so much stillness. So one thing I did was I bought a, ba a bag of these stones, they're egg shaped stones from the dollar store and they're considered um, to be used, A, they're attractive in a bowl, B, I think it's a beautiful shape, I'm very attracted to this beautiful egg shape, I'm attracted to stones, but guess what, it's a pocket meditation, it's something as simple as holding it, holding it in your hands, close your eyes, and just start to feel. Now, when we do our yoga training, we talk about trauma-informed yoga teaching, and for some people, closing their eyes is traumatic, um, and it's not positive, so if that's you, maybe you're staring at the texture of the stone, and the way the light reflects on it, and the color, uh, the shape, or maybe you close your eyes. So you're gonna decide what works for you. The whole point is closing out, single point focus, pratyahara, closing out all the other stimuli as much as possible. Today I have a calming sleep and I put in her, um, I have calm music and the calmest music I could find is if I went in Spotify and I type in sleep music. And there are, is it meta waves? There's deep sleep music available for you. Often it's many hours long. I know some people look at it for free on YouTube. And then there's a beautiful mandala that helps you go to sleep. There's also, this one is just over an hour long. It's perfect for a yoga class. And it's repetitive music in a certain frequency that's supposed to help you relax. It does something to your brain waves. So that's a layer I have, which I should get rid of, but it's a class for the public. The egg is something I can use and I can either roll it. I know some of you, I gave some uh, similar stones I got in San Francisco, they're white and they look almost like a moonstone and any kind of smooth object, I don't know, I just find that so relaxing. So you can set a, a timer on your phone, your phone is your best friend. Five minutes, find an object to, to focus on. Another thing I wanted to bring to mind is, this is a weird homework. Um, if there's a habit that you always have, a lot of you drink a lot of tea, maybe switch to a new tea and have the drinking of that tea your meditation. I find if it's too hot, I do put an ice cube in after I've made it to the darkness that I want. Um, my friend Kim Rogers, some of you know her from class, she um, got me onto this flavor, um, Bengal spice. It's basically a cinnamon tea herbal. Um, and it's funny because for years, since I was 10 years old, I worked in a health food store and celestial seasoning was very special then. And I loved this tea back then. I totally forgotten about it, I'd fallen out of it. Um, and a couple times she's had it. She now has all the ladies in the neighborhood drinking it. And guess what? It's $2.99 this week at, um, Superstore, so I do recommend go into your cupboard, find a tea that you used to love, or try a new flavor and have the, the actual act of the sound of the pouring of the boiling water. Looking at the bag moving around the cup and the change of the color, that's part of your eyes are getting a meditation. The taste of the, medita of the, <laughs> the tea. Um, and then I wanna do a quick reading. We've been reading through this book on and off as a, like a thread woven through our class, Eastern Thought for the Western Mind. Um, and the one that we were reading, we've been reading, and for some reason I keep opening to it because it's, someone wet this book and it, the book keeps opening to the page I'm supposed to read. And we've been reading about the power of silence. So I'm just gonna read a little bit. Um, meditation, if I had to summarize it in a word, we think of it as this big thing. It doesn't have to be single pointed focus, shutting off this endless laundry list in our mind for five minutes. Could be two minutes, could be 30 seconds. Um, in the moment when I'm waiting at a stop sign, stop light, I often will do some deep breathing, staring at something. There's a meditation woven into my life. Silence is the guiding light 
that helps us to find a balance between inner and outer expression. We do have an ongoing dialogue in our head, and we also have this, this dialogue that we have to do is because we are part of society, we're part of a family unit, whatever. Too much silence is not good. And it's funny, the, the book opened to this, and this completely reflects how some of my friends are going through right now as the cold temperature and COVID forces us internally inside too much. We need to go in, discover, and then come out and share. If we only stay inside, we can lose ourselves. We can become uncaring about others. And I'm seeing this happening, unfortunately, in um, society. That is not a healthy silence. Then again, you get those that are always remain with the, with the external. Oh, it's probably me. They spend all their time criticizing, analyzing, discussing, examining, and rushing around. They cannot sit still for a few minutes. One of the methods we use in Raja Yoga is called traffic control. This method consists of being still for a few minutes, stopping the traffic of our thoughts, and you can even visualize the red light. Stepping back, we free the self from tension. We look at the picture of where we're going and then we go back into whatever activity we're involved with. However, going into that silent act, going into the silence actually helps us be more effective and grounded. This is a very useful method, particularly when practiced a few times a day. Meditation helps us to discover our real self. So I do hear over and over and over and over and over how much more effective our brain is, and it has been measured on monks in science with actual medical facility, how much more effective we are as contributors to our life, our family, our happiness, if we step back purposely. And sleeping does not count because your brain is not off. Shavasana is a purposeful chosen moment of calm. If we do that more and more, and seated meditation is better because you don't treat it as a sleep, you treat it as conscious, controlled, calm silence of the brain. If you have endless messages and, and ideas coming in and out of your brain, that's not for you to beat yourself up. You need to find a way to have it move away. So ways I've been told, visualize a cloud drifting away. Visualize when you drop a rock into a lake and the circles dissipate. Visualize you blowing a little feather away. And that's the thought. The one I've used my whole life is I close the book. Each thought is a book. I close the book and I visualize myself putting that thing on the shelf because guess what? It's still there. I don't know what my dog's doing. And not to generalize, I feel that women have the hardest time letting go of feeling we must remember all these things. That leads to lack of sleep. So without further ado, um, oh, sorry, allergies. I want us to do, I'm gonna do a breathing exercise where our eyes are open and I'm counting it. And you can stare at something in your space. You don't have to look at me. Then we'll do the same exercise, five breaths, eyes closed, me counting it. And then I'm gonna do the same exercise, your choice, eyes open or closed, without me counting it. You're gonna count it yourself in your head. And I often, see I often have my hand on my lap and I'm going one, inhale two, two. I'm counting with my fingers so that, again, there's that psychological fear of losing count and then you can't relax and enjoy it. So coming into seated, shoulders back for you. Remember, Sukhasana is yours. There's a cat here, my nose. Your sweet seat can be seated, extended, one leg bent, um, seating on a folded blanket. Get yourself comfortable. Sitting up nice and straight, engage the core slightly. I don't want this to be work, but I don't want you to be hurting your lower back. Shoulders back and then let your elbows just drop. And start to breathe in through the nose, out. And can you hear that ocean sound in your, in your head? That's the sound of your breath. I want you to visualize either blowing up a balloon or filling a box, this idea of expansion, hitting your edge, pausing, and then slowly releasing. So I also visualize a balloon, hit the edge, and then as it slowly deflates, it releases that shape again. So, are you ready? First one, this to me is very distracting. We're gonna try it eyes closed, sorry, eyes open. Softly focusing on something straight ahead of the level of your eyes. Pick one thing to stare at. 
Your body's still maintaining the shape. Inhale one. Pause. Exhale. Inhale two. Pause. Exhale. Inhale three. Pause. Exhale. Inhale four. Pause. Exhale. Inhale five. Pause, hold it. Exhale. Softly blink your eyes, especially if your eyes got dried out. And then we're going to switch which way our legs are. Sitting up nice and straight. However that looks in your body. Shoulders back, head is stacked. So my head is in line with my spine. My mother would be proud of this posture. Now we're gonna close our eyes and have the same level of focus. You're hearing my voice. Some of us find it comforting to hear a voice counting them through the breath. I actually like it. If I don't hear a voice, my mind wanders off, which defeats the whole point of it. So this will be our next version. Eyes closed, sitting up straight. Notice the sits bones hitting into the floor. Notice any tension in the body where it doesn't want to sit up straight. Inhale one. Pause. Exhale. Inhale two. Pause. Exhale. Inhale three, pause, exhale. Don't collapse in the exhale. Inhale four, pause, exhale. Inhale five, pause, exhale and wait before the next breath on autopilot. And gently blink your eyes. So it could be something that simple. The next version, I think we should actually use both hands counting to 10. Um, if it helps you, my method of putting them on my knees. The idea also is that the energy is being corralled down. Um, if you're finding yourself sleepy, there's a theory that opening the palms up is meaning I'm open to energy needed to be present. I'm relaxed, I'm conscious, I'm present, but I'm not falling asleep. I'm not collapsing in this. I'm not escaping. I'm actually aware of the sensations in my body and if I can't control my thoughts, if my thoughts are overwhelming me. So, next version, switch my legs and actually, okay, next time I'll show you my folded seated meditation mat that someone sent us. It's a pretty amazing, it's quilted. Um, if you're interested in buying one, um, I will send you the information. There's a place I found in Mississauga that's not that expensive. It's all cotton and made in India and then they're stuffed here so that the weight isn't wasted on shipping. Um, even if it's your favorite blanket that you don't use very much, why don't you fold it up? Okay, sitting up nice and straight, however that looks in your body. We're gonna do 10 breaths. I'm not gonna count them. Your fingers are gonna count them and you choose eyes open or closed. Starting now.
really start to notice your physical body once more, whether it's comfort, maybe you feel nothing, or maybe you feel discomfort. Use that as your awakening. Sometimes I would use a bell. I will bring that for next time. Gently blink your eyes open and close. Nice. Sometimes that's as simple as it is. Another form I kept saying I'm going to do is if you do legs up the wall, maybe first thing in the morning or end of the day, or maybe both. And can you set a timer for five minutes so that you're physically putting your body into a state of undoing? Um, legs up the wall is often one of the most comfortable ways. Um, another variation is some people will even take a chair right here. They'll put their bum on the floor and their legs, imagine, are on the chair here. So that's another version that you could do your meditation in. Um, you need to find a way so that your body is comfortable, but not falling asleep. There's that middle road. We're always talking about the middle road. Okay. The other thing is if you're cold, that's going to be a distraction. So maybe you have a sweater, maybe you set up a little corner in your house. So there's a sweater that you always use, a folded blanket you always sit on or a pillow. Um, some people like to make it a ritual. Maybe you're burning incense. Maybe you have a certain candle that you love. Uh, all of these candles put a smile on my face because most of them came from different students. And I thought, I need to light these today. That creates an intention for me to step out of my normal everyday life and decor and sit in this space of tranquil. Another form of meditation, maybe I'll take this candle, is Pratyahara, staring, sorry, uh, just stay, staring at a candle. So I'm gonna turn this around. Let's see if you can see that. I'm just gonna hold it for a moment and we're gonna do five breaths. I'm gonna count. You can choose to stare at this candle flame or close your eyes. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. Inhale four. Exhale. Inhale five. Exhale. Gently start to blink your eyes. Coming back to open attention. Okay. Another variation, and I don't have it with me is um, beads. So Catholics have rosaries. Um, I had my aunt set, they were called worry beads. I think they were from Thailand when I was a child. Big wooden beads. Uh, some people have a mala bracelet. Some people have the long mala. Almost every religion has a set of beads that's used for prayer or meditation or reflection. And the idea is that you're touching each bead and either adding um, a thought, a prayer, or a focus um, even again, just the texture of the beads and 108 beads is the number um, that's on the long one and a mala I think is 12. I can't remember the number, but that is another thing. So, so you could even go to your jewelry box, take a, a necklace and what's better about those is they're infinite. They're intertwined. There's no ending, no beginning. Or if there is some people purposely put one bead or a do up thing as the center. And can you do breath work with each bead? There's another nice way of doing meditation. Okay, another form of meditation we talk about is moving meditation. We use our um, sun salutations as a form of meditation. It might take your body quite a while to align the breath and the movement, feeling um, elegant about how you're doing it. Uh, we use music often to help us focus and flow into the movement and to, again, abandon the thoughts for a moment and enjoy what's happening in your body. I love sun salutations. If I were doing it by myself, actually I love going to a lead class where it's over and over and over. And I remember the couple of traditional teachers I used to go to, I was, the monkey mind in me would say, well, when are we ever gonna do yoga? Well, that was the yoga. I was present in my body, in my mind, doing moving meditation. Um, I'm sure a lot of you I know when we have our classes in person miss that piece of being led mindlessly but not bad mindlessly through this moving meditation. Um, you're always welcome to set an intention for yourself. Pick a number, say 10. You're going to do 10 rounds of sun salutations. 
Um, let's do some seated sun salutations. Let's do 10, only the upper part of the body seated. This is an attainable version for most people. You don't need a gym, you don't have to have good knees, nothing. But it's another form of meditation, but this time for some of us, moving is more attainable than having to sit in stillness. So I'm gonna stay with my hands on my knees and go back so I can see you enough. And actually, I'm gonna use the floor as, as if I was standing in mountain pose. This is my floor. So sitting at my straight, I'm gonna close my eyes. Inhale, arms to a T, reach out. Palms face forward. Arms reach up. Engage the core, lengthen up. Don't move the head yet. Exhale, fold. Arms fold. Head drops. Swan dive. Half back, lift up the chest. Exhale, fold, arms to the side wide, and come back down the center, palms aligned, thumb comes down like a zipper down my center, heart center. That's one round, let's do 10 of that. Inhale up, option to look at the hands like you're holding a beach volleyball, exhale, fold. Half back, fold, arms to the side wide, and come back down the center and heart center. Sorry. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Half back. Fold. Arms to the side wide. And coming down to heart center. That's three. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Half back. Fold, arms to the side wide, and come down to center and heart center, Anjali Mudra. Inhale, arms up, exhale, fold. Half back, fold, arms to the side wide, and heart center, five. Inhale up, smile, exhale, fold. Imagine you're on a beach. Half back, fold. Arms to the side wide and heart center. Six. Let's do four more. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Half back. Exhale, fold. Arms to the side wide and heart center. Seven. Three more. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Half back, exhale, fold, arms to the side wide, and heart center. Two more. Inhale up, exhale, fold. Half back, exhale, fold, arms to the side wide, and heart center. Inhale, arms up, exhale, fold. Half back, exhale, fold, arms slide wide, and heart center, Anjali Mudra. Last one, inhale up, maybe a little back bend, exhale, fold. Half back, fold, don't drop the head, arms wide, palms together, align the finger pads, palms are nice and broad, Come all the way down the center. Rest with a thumb towards the sternum or between the breasts, base of the ribs. Shoulders back, elbows back. Press the palms into each other. Face neutral. And exhale. Hands to palms to knees. Shoulders are still back and gently blink your eyes. How does that feel? So I don't know about you, but I have missed that. Um, let's do another variation I used to use all the time with my students, especially my children or my teenager students, is guided meditation. So let's do a short one, and then we're going to do a travel journey, which is my favorite kind of meditation. So you decide what does Sukhasana or Sweet Seat look like in your body today. Move into that position that you can hold for a few breaths. Eyes are closed. Inhale, exhale through the mouth, let it out. I'm gonna do that five times, 
to kind of slow down the sympathetic nervous system. We should have done it at the beginning. Inhale one, exhale through the mouth. Inhale two, exhale through the mouth. Inhale three, exhale through the mouth. Inhale four, big smile. Exhale. And one more time. Inhale through the nose. Pause, hold it. Exhale slowly through the nose. And keeping your eyes closed, start to notice the temperature of the room on your skin. <clears throat> And imagine the sounds of creaking floors, wind beyond the windows, and you're in a big old library. Maybe visualize a house like Downton Abbey, old, solid, filled with history and humans' experiences, but you're in the dark wood library. What does the smell of that dark wood, often clean with lemon oil, the smell of old books, you know that the paper could be brittle between the covers, the linen covers cracked with age on the spine, gold embossed lettering hard to read what the titles are. But at one point in the book's life was so important, was the only information or entertainment that person had. Rows and rows of books organized by theme or idea. The floor creaks as you walk towards the shelf. And without even thinking too much, think of the section that you would have returned to, that you went to, that you went to grab for. There's a little tiny brass label on each section explaining what the theme or subject matter of those books are. You're standing in front of that section. Your eyes start at the top from left to right, checking out all the different titles alphabetically organized. Do you pick a book that you already know the subject matter and you want to know more about, or that you've already read? Or do you close your eyes and randomly let your finger land on a spine? Pull that book out. The shelves and the books groan as you pull out one fat tomb of information. They don't fall though. They expect this book to have come out. There's space. They don't move. They don't leave their space. They stay where their order is meant to be. You pull out the book. Do you purposely start at the beginning of the index? Do you look at the back? Or do you let again have it fall open randomly, seeing where fate wants you to read, wherever your finger lands? Your eyes look down at the tiny print on the paper thin pages. What's the very first word that you see? Let that be your word for today. Let your subliminal mind give you the word. Don't think too much about it. Again, the tactile texture of the silky pages. Maybe your book has paper thin silky pages like an old worn Bible. Maybe your book has really thick linen pages torn on the edges the old-fashioned way. Maybe your book falls open easily, or maybe it's stiff and it's never been looked at, and you have to almost press down the pages to be able to read it. Feel the texture of the fabric of the actual outside of the book. Is it coarse linen? Or is it silky, machine-printed, a newer volume? Hold the book to your nose and take a deep breath. Does it smell old, musty, silky, or the smell of a brand new bookshop or like a, a office supply store, new? Let the book flip open and close in your hands. Do the pages fall softly, flowing like the pages of an old Bible? Or are the pages stiff? They've never been opened. They need your help. Hear the sound as you close the book and open it. Do you slam it shut? 
or do you gingerly close the book and silently put it back on the shelf? Close your eyes, you put the book back. Let your hands choose the next one without even thinking about it. Do you pick a shelf that's the same height as your eyes? Do you reach up high or do you squat down low? You choose a book that the universe is asking you to read right now. Without even thinking about it, pick the book. Keeping your eyes closed, can you open the book and then open them, link them slowly and look at your book? What did you see? If you know the owner of this library, you know what kind of subjects would have been there. Or did you leave your mind open like the size of a big public library and you're completely given new information you never would have thought of? Close the book, put it back on the shelf and take a step back. Hear the groan of that floor once more. The silky softness of the wood, many layers of stain and varnish, and then humans had been walking on it. Are the boards skinny, strip flooring, or is it wide plank like an old barn? There's a chair at the end of the row that you've been sitting at. Quietly, even with your eyes closed, walk to that chair and take a seat. Does your bum easily go to the back of the chair like a wingback chair that would be on the front of a fireplace? Or is it a hard wooden barrister's chair from an antique desk that has wheels, mission style, maybe it spins around? Is it a plastic chair that you would have had in school, rigid and uncomfortable, but the shape of your bottom? Or is it a squishy down overstuffed chair that you want to curl up and draw your knees into your chest and read. You're in the chair, gently start to blink your eyes coming back to open attention, knowing that you have this infinite amount of places to go back to in your mind or in an actual library. It's not escape, it's just taking a pause from this part of your brain and going back to somewhere else. So today I would love you to do that. If you have a bookshelf somewhere, close your eyes, randomly pick a book, and on this cold, chilly day, maybe find somewhere that you are meant to read. Maybe rediscover something that was very important to you at a different point of your life, and let your mind wander to where you got that book. Why did you have that book, and what part of your life did it come from? Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.